by design. Science, technology, engineering, I add environment, art, math, and music that everyone's been talking about by design. Because you see, design is everything in the world that humans configure. Everyone here today has design on them, with them. We've already heard about that from Joe. It's all around us, and we're going to leave this designed environment to take a designed environment through a designed environment to yet another destination that is a designed environment filled with stuff designed by people. Design is pretty important. It is a noun. It is a thing. It is many things. But more importantly, it is an activity and many activities. So an easy way to think about design is through scales. And they're up there. Nano, pattern, object, space, architecture, neighborhood, urban, regional, and the world. Design mediates our experience with objects, environment, information, data is the new language, and experience because our lives are filled with experiences. And those experiences, just like Jasmine and Nakia talked to us, either open up our learning or close our learning down. And in fact, these fields are transforming our ways of knowing, our ways of learning, and our ways of making. And guess what those fields do? They actually charge education. Because education has to change. It has to embrace these new ways of knowing and making. Now, traditionally, education has been directed instruction, directed teacher-led instruction. And yet, what we're knowing now is that informal learning is a much larger part of our life process. Directed learning, 12 to 14 years. Two-thirds of our population figures they're done with education in 12th grade. And what are they doing? They're informally learning. And informal learning is that tacit learning that you do because who you are, the talents you have, the people you know and meet and love, the places you live, the places you visit, the music you listen to, the books you read, the movies you watch. So education is now charged with connecting that informal part of each one of us with that directed instruction that we must have those assessments for because the big goal of education is lifelong learning, right? Those of us who can learn, unlearn, and relearn are resilient in this changing time. And it's about that aha moment, the aha moment when, and hope this works for you, Nakia, but it's when your pupils are open and your synapses are firing and you're motivated and ready to take in information and do something. So my aha moment, we're connecting science and technology and engineering, art and math with people and places, and I became an architect. Had no idea what architects did, but you put all those things together, and that's what they do. They work with all of those in collaborative practices. So now I work with teams of different people, scientists, ecologists, environmentalists, citizen groups, on green initiatives between Milwaukee and Chicago. My second aha moment was at the Art Institute where I met my partner. Now he's over there deciphering this talk in visual note taking, which we'll talk about it in a minute. Because we now know that people learn diversely. So you can just watch what he's drawing if you're not, if I'm not making any sense up here. And when we started, we made hand-drawn animated films that introduced the pleasures of architecture and the complexity of designs to the general public and showed them on PBS. Because we knew, as instructors at the university level, that this hand, heart, and mind connection is the first step before using any computer. And then finally, my third aha moment was actually when I went back to school. And I went back to school at the side of our daughter, one of our four children, who has autism. So I was, there I was, a university professor, and I am back in kindergarten. And I went from kindergarten all through 12th grade at the side of a child's curiosity, trying to bring them into the adult world. 
Now that one daughter was a success, but in that process of meeting all those other students, I realized that the child's curiosity is the most valuable but fragile thing in the world. And the greatest journey is to go along any child's curiosity, to bring that into fruition into our adult life. And I learned about learning differently. So that aha moment, they say that children who have art and design and active project-based learning are four times as likely to stay in school, four times as likely to succeed in school, four times as likely to succeed in work, and finally, yes, four times as likely to succeed in life. Well, that sounds great. The state of our schools and the state of our teaching we're told that only 47% of middle school students have access to art. What about the other half of the children in our country? And so we find that middle school is the transform transformational time when we have the falling off of parental guidance and input and the upcoming of peers and then I'm not wearing those pants to school, Mom, and I'd like my room painted pink because Actually, that curiosity is starting to take possession and they're becoming designers. Middle school is the transformative pathway to succeed in life. They now have realized that if a student uh, um, fails at even one class in middle school, they are more than 50% likely to drop out in high school. We cannot lose <coughs> this imagination because we are humans and human success is based on diversity. So this is a story about STEAM by design here in Wisconsin. And I'm really pleased to be right now here in Milwaukee on the shores of Lake Michigan, poised to be the great, the freshwater capital of the world. And secondly, I'm really pleased to be in Wisconsin because it is the home of the late Senator Gaylord Nelson, who established Earth Day and mandated that every child in school should have outdoor learning experiences. And thirdly, because of this university, this state's university system, who had a president who said, the innovation and research of higher education must not rest until those ideas reach every household in the state. We're talking access to learning. And then finally, Wisconsin is a national leader in having established art and design learning standards. Only three other states in the whole country have art and design learning standards. Canada and the UK have been teaching it since 1995. We are leading. And those design opportunities for young imaginations will lead to creative economies. So I'm here to introduce our educational nonprofit which gives free access to design opportunities across those nine scales. I hope you've got them memorized, all right? It introduces what design is, what it does, and why it's important. It's a collaborative effort of over 100 college architecture and design students from MIT, Harvard, CCA and the West Coast, UWM and the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. And while they're going to school, they realize just like this state's university system, that they need to bring the cultural issues that they're researching to a younger population. And design introduces active, place-based project learning. I guess it's going to repeat on me. That introduces that opportunity for someone to come up with an idea. Not get an A on a test, but have an aha moment, test the idea, just like we saw Ilya and his engineering group working on, and then realize that so that they can engage the world. So in 50 states, 100 countries, and 1,000 cities, people are Googling next.cc. And the CC stands for creativity and compassion. The taking of the me and putting it out there in the larger world of the we. Yes, it does critical thinking, contextual, communicative, all of those things. You can see the nine scales online. You can say, I just want to work with nanotechnology, or I'm kind of interested in objects, or maybe I want objects and nanotechnology, 
and world. Then you see that it's got all the subjects, science, technology, I put these in order for you, <laughs> art and design, math, social studies, language arts, of course the built environment. This is what we're here for in a connection with the environment. And then the only reason and the main reason for us to learn is because we want to connect our personal health with the local health of our community with global health. And so these new literacy, echo literacy, thanks to Wisconsin, it's creating cultural and environmental sense of place, purpose, and stewardship. When our daughter with autism was able to talk, we taught her that the purpose of life is a life of purpose. And that's why we go to school, to learn, to find out where we fit in. And then finally, and Sherry talked about this so much, digital fluency. There is a digital divide going on in this country, and it's not necessary. We need to get our schools wired and get kids to have access to all the cultural practices that we use to make share meaning, create, and collaborate. So next.cc introduces tools that artists, scientists, designers, and environmentalists use. It introduces languages or sets of, knowledge, sets of ideas and vocabulary. It introduces discovery journeys that look at economy, culture, technology, and climate, and how they shape sustainable responses. And then finally, design opportunities, or the opportunity for somebody, we have someone in kindergarten using this, <laughs> all the way up to fourth year in college. We have them showing it to their parents where they can have an idea and contribute it. To access the site, these are called journeys. You click on it, every journey has an introduction. It has transdisciplinary activities. We did this for the teachers, it has a review. You can see if you're actually learning new vocabulary. And then it has the connections. So we'll go to the Boston Museum of Science and we'll look at the greatest inventor of all time, Leonardo's actual um, journal. We can download a nature journal from Sierra and walk out and have a full body experience looking at something on the schoolyard. We can go to the British Museum and turn the actual pages of Mozart's musical journey. We can hear the music playing and listen to a docent talking about it. And finally, the Metropolitan will take us right into Van Gogh's life, show us his sketches, give us some vocabulary, show us how he makes it painting, and then wait a minute, there it is, digital fluency. You can pick up your mouth and you can try your own rendition of Starry Night or your own view outside of your bedroom window. And then you can print it and take it home and that's pretty exciting. And then you'd think, well, okay, I did that journey, I'm done. Well, no, no, it's time to relate. So if I'm interested in journey, I might be interested in bookmaking or information architecture or words and writing. I'm gonna go to what Mark's doing over here. It's a active strategy to keep your children focused in your classroom. It's called visual note taking. And it introduces visual note strategies like arrows and buttons and notes and cartoons and it's really a whole bunch more fun than just taking notes. And in fact, you've heard probably or seen Sir Ken Robinson's um, digital video with RSA where he says, you know, everyone's really raising standards. Why, who would lower them to improve education? But he goes on and talks about how children are medicated and just kind of placated in the school classroom and that we need them active learning. We always show examples of someone who has been so passionate about this that oh, they've made a new business about it and they're making their livelihood doing this. So we talked about lines. Lines are everywhere. This is one of my favorite sites. You can go in. It's now closed. The Lascaux Caves of France and there you are. Oh my gosh. Prehistoric ancestors and they drew in the ceiling of their home about a great hunt. It gives you goosebumps. Or we can come right back here to a local photography and go, oops, there's just that blade of grass and look at that cool shadow it's making on the sun or on the shadow or on the water. Or we can go back to Spain and see this incredible Spanish architect who does these gestural drawings and then lays them down on urban waterfronts and they become social incubators for changing the economy of cities. 
or we can go to the walker and draw lines on line. We can download Google Scribble Maps and then with our friends trace our paths to all of our houses and have fun. We can laugh at this funny little YouTube video of romance in lower mathematics. And then we can start saying, wow, lines and dots can do a lot of things like, oh, I could dissect a circle and a square. And then I could also look up into the sky and connect the constellations. And actually, I could look at proportion in nature. Or in my own body, I am a circle and a square. That's pretty cool. Or there's something called ergonomics, where I study how I move and how that affects where a chair and a stair is. And then again, relate. So nature patterns are really key to get children out to understand, because they're everywhere. And we know with changing ways of learning that understanding nature is critical. We can understand it formally and aesthetically. Sherry talked about looking closely. We can abstract it to be a lamp, a pattern, a city. We can make an Earth Day pavilion. How many Wisconsin schools have Earth Day pavilions? Let's get them going. We can look at the patterns in nature. This was one of my aha moments as a student was The Power of Ten by Ray and Charles Eames, where you go way up into the universe and there are just zillions of professions and careers up there. And then you dive right down into your own cell or a plant cell and you're just like, well, there's like four million more there. So there's surely some place that I could contribute. This Nikon universal scale moves laterally. And laterally, it really shows us how big things are. So I have two more things and I'll be done. Because I'm an architect and we talked about M being music, let's look at music and architecture. You can actually plot a score for the dynamics, rhythm, and texture, and then walk out around your community and see it full scale and find examples of it. You can 3D, 3D digitally model your city and use it as the paper scroll for a, a pay, player piano. And the tall buildings make loud, louder sounds. You can actually watch this beautiful love story to architecture moving you around the world at all these buildings, including our Milwaukee Art Museum. And then all of a sudden, it takes your breath away because it's all digitally done. And you can think, I really want to do that. And then finally, we're going to end at water because we started with water here in Wisconsin. And we are going to take a fresh water measure of the water in the Great Lakes and in the world to understand what a little tiny bit. And we're going to connect that with that sixth grade exercise of the parts of the water cycle. And usually that's where it stops. Well, guess what? How much water does it take to have that cup of coffee we just drank? 35 gallons. Cotton t-shirts, 700 gallons. Why are we buying so many t-shirts? And then we can look at the artist who here in the discovery world is, we've got one of his trees up there who makes art. We can look at Dreisaitl who builds water in cities for people to appreciate. Or we can listen to Annie Leonard, and you will take every plastic water bottle out of your school in any business meeting. We're almost there. We can start listening to Ted Ed and looking at the freshwater scarcity. And then how about helping the 40% of the world that doesn't have access to clean water? The hippo roller saves this woman five trips outside of her village where it's dangerous, where she can fill up 24 gallons and pull it back. Or my favorite is the life straw. Look at the girl drinking. She's drinking out of muddy water. This will, I forget, it's, it's like uh, 18,000 liters. It will purify. These are incredible inventions. They're awe-inspiring inventions. We introduce this to teachers and professional development workshops. We've given about 60. We introduce them to environmental education, to design education, and to technological literacy. We make them champions and advocates for greening their school and introducing place-based active learning. We also connect them with taking them outside of their school and learning about their city and their community because this is important for children to develop their sense of place. And then we give this as a, a school in Milwaukee who does not have art. So we bring them in for two hours, two hours of their entire year they get to draw, paint, model, make. And this girl, first time she'd ever used a computer, except for word processing. She learned it like that, and you can see she's teaching someone else. So your homework for today, if you haven't done it, the Earth Day footprint quiz, it's under Earth on Next. 
and you'll really think about learning differently and living differently. And then there's 18 or more water journeys that will really change how you think about living on these Great Lakes. So finally, join the community, join the way of learning and <laughs> learning differently and working differently. Let's see if I can roll this out. This is for you, this is for your students, this is for imaginations, young and old. It's a repository of the best the world that has to offer. Over 200 journeys, a thousand activities, and 5,000 museum interactives. So travel the world, connect with the world, and have ideas to imagination. Thank you. Thank you.